Hello again, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this short video I want to talk you through um, an image that I'm going to take. It's not going to be a very exciting image, it's going to be an image um, out of my patio door here into the gardens and trees in the distance. But the reason I'm taking the image is I'm going to take it on, first of all, this beastie, which is my Sony A7R4 uh, with the 24 to 70 G Master lens on it. I'm also going to take the same shot mounted on a tripod with the same settings on the RX10 Mark IV um, with the same focal length as well, so I'll probably set it at 50 or 70 millimeters uh, for each of them. And then also on this camera, this tiny Sony RX100 Mark VII, which I'm vlogging on at the moment. Um, the objective of this is to see several things really. The first is how much better is an image that's taken with a 60 odd megapixel camera compared to, in the case of the other two Sony's, approximately 20 megapixels each. Um, and also, do those pixels matter? Do we need that many? Um, occasionally I blow pictures up really quite large and I've done several panoramas which have been quite large as well. Um, but in reality, I rarely need them to be as large as they are. Okay, the extra pixels give me the ability to crop in much tighter on the image than I would be able to with any of the other cameras, um, which means composition in camera is much more important using those smaller cameras or smaller megapixel count cameras. Um, but apart from that and the extra dynamic range that the A7R4's got, um, really is the difference worth it? Um, so. Come with me, see the images. I'll switch over to do a screencast in a moment um, with Lightroom with the images that I take. And I'll show you the setup that I have, which I'll have to vlog on my iPhone uh, because I'll be using the Sony here for some of the testing as well. Anyway, let's see how that works and uh, see what conclusions can be drawn from that, if any. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, the first camera I'm going to test is the A7R4. And so that the test is fair as possible, what I'm going to do is set f8 as the aperture. I'm going to set um, ISO, in this case 64, the lowest the camera is capable of. And I'm going to set the lens at 70 millimeters, which is a convenient point. Each of the cameras has got that um, 70 millimeter range on it. So, hmm, dust. No dust. Right, so first of all, you can probably hear um, Hurricane Dennis in the background out there. The trees are moving around in the garden quite a lot, as you might imagine they would be. Um, so let's first of all get a shot with the A7R4. It's not an interesting picture, it's not meant to be interesting, it's just automatically metered with. Um, the highlight priority mode. Um, I always shoot with highlight priority, I think that's what it's called, um, on the Sony's. What it does is it exposes to the brightest part of the image, um, which is fine most of the time. Occasionally if you've got the sun there it, it gets a bit confused, but it basically means none of the highlights are blown out and I can pull the shadows back because the dynamic range is pretty good. So if I need to get detail in the shadows I can recover it reasonably well. So. It's not a very exciting image, but given that the uh, trees in the distance at the other end of the garden are moving a fair bit, I think we'll need to have, uh, let's have F8, as I said, uh, ISO 50. That's showing me a quarter of a second exposure, which given the trees are moving as much as they are at the moment, there's going to be so much motion blur in the pictures, I won't be able to deduce anything about the actual um, quality um, from the point of view of image quality. So let's just get that exposure compensation wound in to zero. That's giving me a quarter of a second. Although the tops of the trees are going to be moving, the things nearer the ground are not moving. So the quarter of a second exposure time it's giving me won't matter. Um, I'll still be able to look at the detail in the parts of the image that aren't moving. So let's get the one for the A7R4 and just do a little bit of pixel peeping to make sure I've got an image I can work with. Um, yep, yeah, as ever, a lot of detail. Okay, camera number two. This is the RX10 Mark IV, again mounted on the same tripod, pointing in the same direction. Um, I just need to get it up to 70 millimeters, which we can do with this. Uh, 48, 50, 61, 72, 
it goes in stages, it doesn't go in whole um, nice round numbers, but I'll line it up for the same shot as the other one that I took with the A7R4. And F8, 80th of a second, ISO is currently auto on this one, so I'll put that down to manual and I'll set it to 64, as I did with the other camera. That's giving me a half a second exposure. So I'll take that image and then I'll put the ISO up to 400 like I did with the A7R4. Again, to get something akin to a bit more, uh, what have we got? This ISO 400 at f 8 is giving me a 13th of a second. That's quite a lot of variation there, that's very odd. Um, I might need to look into that. Uh, let's get that shot. And just have a look, make sure we've got a decent image there. Um, where's the expand button here, yeah, that one? Okay, I've taken the shots and I've got the camera ready. I'm going to uh, pull the images off the SD card and load them into Sony's proprietary software. And then I'll switch across to a, screen, a screencast with you guys and I'll show you what the images look like. And I'll voice that over so that we can talk it through and see if it works or not. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. I've imported the images down here at the bottom. There are six images, the um, 50 stroke 64 ISO image for each camera and the 400 ISO for each camera here. The first two images are from the uh, RX10 Mark IV. That's these two here. The next two are from the RX100 Mark VII. And then the last two are from the uh, A7R4. So if I set a reference picture here, I'll go into develop module and choose the reference mode. Come on, get it there in a moment. I'll put the, the best image that I expect on here, which is going to be the A7R4 60 or 64 or 50 ISO, I can't remember which I set it to. So we can see in this pane here that it's put that image up here. Um, I basically made the adjustments to these images already, and I've just basically set them to auto. Um, just to get the, the levels pretty much the same across all the images. Uh, you can see from the bottom here that the other two cameras are slightly lighter. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, the auto settings seem to have come out darker for the A7R4. It's probably something to do with the camera profile that um, Lightroom has for that camera. Uh, anyway, this left hand image is quite nice and detailed. That's 100% zoom in on a 60 megapixel file. So if we sort of expand it out to the whole screen, you can see how much of it that is. Um, just make this window a little bit smaller here because it's, I'll hide it. Give me a bit more real estate on the screen here to play with. Um, come on, that's it. No, that's it. Okay, so if I zoom in on this, you can see that on the parts of the image that I'd expect no motion blur, namely this tree trunk at this level close to the ground, even though the top's moving, the bottom isn't. Um, you can see there's an awful lot of detail in that image. Um, and you can see motion blur in the things that will be moving like leaves, but that's to be expected. But as far as that trunk's concerned, there's an awful lot of detail in and around that little scar here on the tree trunk, and also the, uh, the lichen that's growing on it. There's a lot of information in that picture. And if we make the second image, um, it's the same image, I'll change the second image to be the 400 ISO version, ISO 400 up here, as opposed to ISO 50 up here. And zoom in. Interestingly, that zoomed into more than one to one, uh, it would seem, because this one on the right is smaller. Hmm. That's fascinating. How have I managed to get those out of sync with each other? They're the same image area. Yep, yep, they're positioned exactly the same, taken from exactly the same point with the same focal length. Uh, but for some reason, I zoom in on this one, and then I zoom in on this one, and one of them zoomed in more than the other. That's probably something I've set on Lightroom, I don't know. But um, again, the 400 ISO image is still pretty clean. Um, it's, it's quite a detailed image, even the details of the fence in the distance are quite clear. Um, the branches are nice and detailed, and 
beautifully sharp, which is what I expect from that camera with that lens. Okay, so let's now have a look at a ISO 80, which is the RX100 Mark 7's lowest ISO. And we'll go as close as we can, and you can clearly see there is mm, quite a lot less detail in this picture. Um, it's zoomed in one-to-one, -one, so it's obviously a lot smaller because it's a smaller image sensor, a uh, smaller megapixel count, but there is clearly much less information in the picture on the right when they're both zoomed in at one-to-one. -one. And if we now look at the RX10 Mark IV's image at ISO 64, which it's, is its lowest ISO, um, again, there's a, a quite a significant amount of detail in this picture. It's clearly a better camera than the RX100. Um, there's quite a lot more detail. Uh, the lichen on the tree, for instance, here is a lot more uh, it's crisp, it looks focused properly, um, much as it does on the RX, sorry, the um, A7R4 image. Uh, so let's just switch back to the RX100 Mark 7. Yes, see the lichen on the tree here is far less well defined. Um, it's there, but it's it's the edges are blurred compared to the RX10 Mark 4, which is this one. So. The whole point of this video was to actually talk about these differences and I think I pretty much uh, proved to myself, if not to you guys, that uh, the 60 megapixel image is a far superior image in terms of both the resolution but also the dynamic range and the combination of that sensor with that particular uh, G Master lens really does produce some stunning results. Um, the other two cameras are perfectly usable. Um, uh, images there's nothing wrong with them but it's clear that if you do want to crop in tight and you also want to retain a lot of detail or you need to produce really large images for printing um, or exhibition purposes the a7r4 is clearly the beast to, to use for doing this and that's even without going into its 240 megapixel mode um, which I might or might not have mentioned in the other video um, it stacks uh, 16 images together all at 60 megapixels and it gets full color resolution R, G and B at each pixel location because the sensor moves so the bear pattern on the sensor um, is uh, aligned correctly so that every pixel has got full um, R, G and B on it rather than interpreted and also it's 240 megapixels worth of image quality and there's no noise with it as well because um, in overlaying all the images together when it does high resolution what it's doing is it's actually cancelling the noise out on the, the sensor noise as well. So you can have quite high ISO in that mode and you'll still get pretty clean images. In fact, I might actually do one video just on using that um, high ISO, sorry, high um, resolution mode. Uh, for instance, for night photography, I've never tried it. I might be tempted to if the weather ever gets better around here. And looking out the window at the moment, it's howling gale. Storm Dennis is doing its worst. Hopefully, I won't find half the trees in the garden have been blown down and have to cut them up with a chainsaw. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, please ask any questions, feel free, put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys. And I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.